Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity 2D tutorial series where we're taking a look at all the basic elements you need to make your own awesome platformer game. So today we're going to take a look at the countdown timer. So if you want to have your levels have a certain time limit on them for to put the player under pressure and add a bit of add a, an extra sense of urgency to your game, it's relatively simple to add to the game and pretty straightforward. So we're going to take a look at how to do it here. So we're going to do much like we added our score system before and our health system, we're going to add a, a time uh, on screen element as well. So rather than having to go and add new text objects the same as we've done before, we'll just copy one of the ones we have here. So we've got our health and we've got our score, so let's copy our health one here. So we'll just duplicate this with Control and D and we'll rename it to time system. Open this up and we'll rename all these just so we can keep track of everything easily. Time counter and time title. Nope, not Tim title. I don't know who Tim is. Tim title. Strange new character for our game. Okay, um, <laughs> instead of health, we don't want to have that. We want to have time there, like that, and time counter. We'll start off with like 100 seconds, just, put, just as like an example for ourselves. So what we need to do is select the two of these and drag them down using our positions down to roughly around there, that looks about right. And that's fine. And of course we don't want to use the health the score or the health manager script on this, so we'll remove health manager script here, remove that component, and then we're going to add our own new script to manage our time for the game. So we'll go to our scripts folder, create a C sharp script, and we'll call this one time manager, straight fairly straightforward and sensible. And we'll open this up in mono develop. And again, much like so much of what we've done in this series so far, it's all very straightforward. It's just about a matter of putting all the elements together and making something that works well in your own game. So we're going to need a few different things here in our system. What we're going to need is obviously an, a, a number of time that we want the player to start off with. So we'll say public float uh, starting time. And then we're also going to want to, the script will be attached to the time counter object. So what we want to be able to do is at affect that value. Uh, so much again, much as we've done before, we're going to have to use our text um, control. And to use that, we have to remember, we have to use using unity engine dot UI. So that lets you access all the UI elements within unity through scripting. So we're going to go here, we're going to do uh, private text the text and that allows access to text part of the script um, and but to be able to access the text part of the object that we've attached to we have to find it so we'll go the text is equal to get component text so now we'll be able to affect that object just like we want to and so then in our update loop loop what we want to do is display the time on and our thing in the corner up here. So if we'll go um, the the text dot text. So that's looking for the text part of the text object. So the text dot text is equal to our little brackets plus starting time. And obviously we don't want starting time to just stay the same the whole time. We want to be slowly making that count down. So what we'll do is starting time minus equals time dot delta time. So that'll slowly decrease the time as it goes along. And we'll just save that and convert it. Then we pop back over here and we'll see once it finishes compiling down in the corner down here we will hopefully see just how this looks. So this won't be quite what we want to use because it's going to cause a little bit of an issue that we won't want to happen. Um, just an example of it working. Oh, well, you know what? It's not going to work for anybody unless we attach it to that time counter. So we'll just stop this running. Add component, time, time manager. And we'll give it a starting time. We'll go with we'll just go with fifty, just so we know it's it's affecting the change up there and everything. Just in case for some strange reason the countdown doesn't work, but it should be all working perfectly fine. Uh, so here we go. Once it starts, 
you can see it's ticking away down, but we don't want these long strings of numbers. We don't want 43 point blah, 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 blah. We just want it to be the normal full number. And it's quite straightforward to do that as well. So what we'll do, instead of just saying uh, the, tar the starting time is what we want to put up there, what we'll put in front of this is matf dot round, and then put some brackets around starting time here. And what that, do, that, what that will do is round starting time up to the nearest whole number. So then if we save that and we pop back in over here. Now once this is going and it's all compiled down in the corner. It's been that long it can take to compile for such a, a, a simple little short little script that we've written. But anyway, okay, so we press play here. So now we should get solid whole numbers in our time countdown. So here we go, we have 50, 49, 48, and etc. continuing onwards. Uh, so there, that's, that's nice and handy, but if we just actually just restart this here again, um, there's going to be a little issue that we have here where, so the time's counting down, that's perfect, that's just what we want, but if we pause the game, oh, it's still not counting down. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, because of the way we're pausing the game, we're using our, we're slowing down the time scale of the game. But you may not do that. People have different ways of doing their pause menu. You might have a different way of doing it so that your time continues counting downwards, even if your your time scale is frozen at zero. So the way, a way to get around that is by calling our pause menu script. Uh, if we go in here, if we create a new object here, uh, we'll do a private. Uh, pause menu, we call it just the pause menu. And in our start function, we will find that that pause menu in the game. So the pause menu is equal to find object of type pause menu. And that will find the only pause menu that we have in the game at the moment. And what we're going to do is if uh, the pause menu dot is paused. So that value is in our pause script and it's saying that's telling us when that when the pause menu is activated basically. And so what we're saying here is if the pause menu is paused then we don't want to do any of the minus time dot delta time. We want everything to say the same. So what we're going to say here is if the pause menu is paused then just return. And what return will do is just cancel everything else in that update loop. It'll just stop there and go out of the update loop and it won't move on to any of this stuff here. And that's fine. So then if our, if we press play, okay, we won't see any change here now, but now you would, if your pause menu was running on a different kind of system, then you would be able to freeze your time counter counting down. And you might want to do, if you're using the time counter for something else, if you're just counting down towards an action happening, uh, if you want to be able to stop your time when a player walks on a button or something like that, you could do something similar to just activate it and stop your time script from looping through its update. Um, and yeah, so the time is counting down away here. That's all grand. But what happens when it gets to the bottom? If we just set it to like two seconds, two, one, zero. Oh, minus one, minus two. Okay, we're not actually doing anything. Nothing's happening. So we need something to happen when we get to the run out of time. And we've already got a game over system that we've implemented in the game. So we could say if the player runs out of time, he's going to be game, gamed over and he's going to lose everything that he has. So how are we calling our game over screen into action? Well, we're using that from our life system. So if we open up our life system script, our life manager script even here, um, so what we have is our, we have a public game object of the game over screen and what happens is when the player's life goes down to zero, the game over screen is set to active and the player is set to inactive. So let's do that the exact same in our time manager. So we'll just take, we'll copy this whole little section here, our public game object, game over screen and public player controller player. We'll paste those in there. And at the start of our function, we want to find a player, much like we did in our life manager. So we'll just copy that and paste that in here as well. And we will also 
we want to use this little bit of section to deactivate our game over or to activate sorry our game over screen and deactivate the player and that's going to occur in this section here when the starting time goes down to zero here so what we'll do here is if starting time is less than or equal to zero then paste in that stuff we just had a second ago and close that little loop so now our game over screen will be activated as soon as the time counts down to zero uh, so what do we have to do where is our time time counter here once it finishes compiling again we'll get a space to drag our game over screen menu into here so game over screen into there we don't need to worry about the player because he'll be found at the start of the script automatically so now if we hit play so our time counter is counting the way down we'll set the time down to three seconds three two one zero game over our time is still being shown on screen somehow oh because it's because our time system is below our game over screen there we need to move that above no not as a child of that thing though there we go we'll move it just down below here perfect so now our game over screen will come up and that'll be how that handles that but what if you wanted your player to be able to just lose a life when you ran out of time well that's going to require a little bit of rewriting of our code because at the moment we just have our uh, our starting time is just counting down from the start and it's been brought down to zero uh, but if we're going to want the player to be able to lose a life and the time obviously if you lose a life when you get to zero you need your time to reset back up to full so what we'll do is we'll do a private float here and we'll say counting time and then in our start function we'll say counting oh, if we could put it in the right place counting time is equal to starting time and now down here instead of saying we're doing anything in starting time we'll do everything in counting time so counting time minus equals delta time and we'll just copy this and we'll paste it over all these so instead of starting time there and instead of starting time here so now now our, our start oh, I accidentally copied that uh, now instead of uh, counting starting time for everything we'll be using on counting time so then we can add an extra function down here uh, to say if and uh, not if sorry um we'll say public void uh, reset time and we'll do that there so now we will add just in here we'll just simply say counting time count if I could spell counting it would be nice too counting time is equal to starting time so from here we'll be able to reset the time when the player dies so basically what we want to do here now instead of accessing our game over screen and deactivating our player we can like comment out these lines of code here just like that and we'll just comment out these just in case you want to go back and use this system for your game overs yourself and um, instead here we're going to go into our health manager script if we open this up So in our health manager script here, we've got uh, our heart player function. Um, and what would actually be very helpful to have here is rather than having our heart player function, if we had an extra function to just instantly kill the player. So what we'll do here is say, add an extra thing in here, public void, public, sorry, public static void actually, because it'll only have one use. So public static void, kill player and uh, we don't need to give any value into that and then in here we in here we'll simply say player health is equal to zero and we'll save that and we'll save our time time manager what we have uh, but now we have our health manager saved with that function added but in here we will go health manager dot kill player 
So what that'll do is it'll reset the health to zero. Um, and then from in here, actually, it might be better not to make this a static function, actually. We'll make it a public void kill player. And then in here, what we're going to, we're going to make it find the time manager. So private time manager, we'll call this the time. And then our start function will make it find that. So the time is equal to find object of type time manager. That's perfect. And so now down here, once the player health is, is set to zero, then it'll kill the player. Uh, actually, we said say like every time the player gets killed, we probably want the time to reset back up to full. Because if you're not killing the player, if you're not getting the game over when time runs out, you want time to be fair and to return when the player dies. So rather than having it in this function here, we'll have it where the player is killed. We will reset the time here. So here we will go the time dot, and what did we just call that function? Time dot reset time, just like that. And now in our time manager, we want to be able to kill that player like we were just going to do. So this, as this isn't a static function anymore, that won't work for us. So what we need to do is, oh, we're not finding the player anymore, but we need to find the health manager. So we'll go private health manager. We'll just say the health, just for handiness sakes. And then in the start here, we will say the health is equal to find object of type health manager and then down here when our time is equal to zero then the health dot kill player so now if we save that and we go back in here once we hit play once everything is compiled okay, there was no errors with what we did there anyway. And let's actually just wait for it to compile. And just unpause and replay it again. Just to make sure there's no errors. Sometimes if you start to play without the script and compile, sometimes they'll compile, compile and run okay in the game, but sometimes they'll throw up strange errors. So we'll go to our time system, we'll just move our time down nice and low. So down here. Oh, we don't have access to that because we made it private. So we'll go into our debug and we'll change our counting time. We can't change our counting time. Okay, well, we'll just set our start time down nice and low then. If we hit play here now, we should see once the time ticks down to zero, we should lose a life and player explodes. Time got reset. We lost the life down here. Perfect. Just exactly what we want to happen. So there you go. That's the basics of adding your own little time manager to the game. Killing the player, resetting the time, or going to a game over screen if that's the way you'd like to handle it yourself. So thanks for watching everybody. I will return soon with more tutorial goodness. Um, and hopefully you will be able to implement this kind of countdown timer with other various uses in your game. So thanks for watching and I will return very soon. Goodbye. Thanks for watching this episode and if you'd like to see just how some of the concepts we've covered can be brought together into a fully fledged game then head to portalnauts.com and check out the demo for my game that I've been working on for the last while. Uh, it uses a lot of the concepts we covered so far in the series as well as other things that we're going to cover in the future. So if you want to get a feel for where we're going and what kind of things you can make with these kind of, with the basics of Unity, um, head over there, try out the game for yourself and let me know what you think of it of course. And the best place to let me know is to head to Twitter at games plus james say hi i'm always there ready to say hello and do stupid things but also if you'd like to see some of the game being worked on and developed in in real time head to twitch.tv slash games plus james where i regularly stream development of the game and you can get to see behind the scenes of how things all work so head there say hello and i'll see you all in the near future <laughs>